In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight is dripping with meaning. Tonight it, we have as our first reading the story of the Passover, how the, the people of Israel were to eat the lamb and, and with their loins girded so they could leave quickly, the unleavened bread, the, the, um, and God would smite the firstborn, and all that's rolled up into tonight. We'd had, pass, we'd had um, Palm Sunday, your adulation. Now here's Jesus about to be betrayed and die tomorrow. And he, he overlays on top of the Passover. Instead of God smiting the firstborn, he, God, would bear the sin in him. You know, the bread and the wine, this is my body, this is my blood. There's so much here. And uh, during the week, though, I was thinking about um, Jesus Christ Superstar. And uh, I know, as you do. And uh, I was remembering that, see, in the, who went and saw Jesus Christ Superstar at the Festival Theatre in the 70s? And was John English. Was it John English? Yeah. Yeah, as uh, Judas. And there's this bit in there, Jesus at Gethsemane, and he says to God, take me now before I change my mind. Actually, if that were true, if that's what really Jesus thought, it would actually unpick everything that had gone before and everything that was to come after. And if Jesus really thought in an aggravated, reluctant way, take me now, before I change my mind, he wouldn't have said, pick up your cross and follow me in his ministry. It would be a lie. It'd be, well, it would be a mismatch. Uh, he wouldn't be able to say, no greater love than if someone lays down their life for another, because he's, he would be the reluctant. It wouldn't be like he was giving his life. It would be more like it was being taken. He wouldn't be able to say, those who save their life would lose it and those who lose their life would save it because he would be not actually living it. We unpick more and more and more actually. The more, uh, the less Jesus is surrendering himself, the more we unpick his ministry. And to really make that point, imagine that Jesus on the cross really was resentful he really had had his life taken from him rather than surrender it a figure who almost had lost his faith you know my god my god why have you forsaken me is not actually the cry of one who has who has reluctantly given his life it says something other than that but actually if he if he was resentful it might mean something else and Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Wouldn't ring true if he was reluctant to, in self-sacrifice, in loving self-sacrifice, self-giving, to say, Father, forgive them. We actually get a, a look into the heart of God because that's what God's like on the cross. Father, forgive them. If it wasn't, if Jesus was reluctant... Actually, what we'd get to see was a God who actually you might need to avoid or, or who you actually don't really want to follow, but I suppose. But because Jesus does give himself wholeheartedly on the cross, that's why we get an insight into God. You know, one of the archbishops of Canterbury said, God is Christ-like, and there is no un-Christ-likeness in God. Yes. You see, we couldn't say that if Jesus had been reluctant. Christ doesn't carry our burdens reluctantly. That's the good news. Now, the disciples don't get this. You know, they've done the washing of the feet, they've done the bread and the wine, you know. He's, he's given Judas 
a bit of the bread, as Judas is going to betray him, a bit of the bread that they've just used for communion. It's very beautiful, the, the, the bread of forgiveness he's given to Judas. They don't get any of this. They don't get what's happening. That will come later. But tonight on this eve of what is to come, we get an insight into its deepest meaning. Amen.